Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our next uh, virtual open event on the Faculty of Community Studies. Uh, this afternoon, we're just going to be talking about a few of the different courses uh, based around higher education, education and training and access to higher education. We've got a little video for you to watch where the courses are explained in a little bit of detail and then the tutors will be on hand to talk you through any questions you may have and hopefully provide you with the answers that you need. So if you'd like to watch the video and then just let us know if there's any questions while you're watching. Hello, may I extend a warm welcome to Herefordshire and Ludlow College. My name is Alison Moon and I am the Assistant Principal of one of the two faculties based at the Hereford campus. Welcome to the Faculty of Community Studies. You will be greeted by the managers that lead the various courses and they in turn will introduce you to the course leaders. The courses we offer cover beauty, hairdressing, catering and hospitality, travel and tourism, business studies, access to HE, supporting teaching and learning, sport, public services, childcare and health and social care. We offer you the opportunity to study any one of these full-time courses along with a full tutorial programme to support your needs and the opportunity to reset GCSE Maths and English. Before we move on, I just want to tell you some of the reasons you may wish to study with us. We have an Ofsted pass rate of 93%. We have excellent physical resources. We offer a friendly, safe and open environment. We have lecturers with real world experiences. Added to that, we have students who have said that we are 93% making good progress. They also say 94% of them enjoy their lessons. 97% say their teachers encourage them to work hard and behave well. 95% say they receive good support from their teachers. 97% say they know how they are expected to behave. And 92% say, say they would recommend the college to a friend. So collect your questions and sit back as we welcome you to see what we have on offer in our dynamic faculty. Hi, my name's Linda Harrison and I'm the Curriculum Manager for Education and Professional Studies. We have a wide range of studies predominantly aimed at adults. One of our popular courses is the Access to Higher Education. If you've always wanted to go and study at university, then this is the course for you. In just one year, you can complete a qualification that will take you to university. So maybe you've been thinking about training as a nurse, becoming a paramedic, becoming a midwife, or becoming a teacher, then this is your pathway to get to higher education. Most people take out a loan, but if you do decide to go on to higher education, which most students do, then this loan is wiped, which is a bonus. Another course we run is a supported teaching and learning in schools. This course aims to qualify you as a teaching assistant, which is a great career because predominantly you only work in term time. So that might appeal to parents amongst you. If you really like what you've done at level two and three, then you might choose to go on to level four and five and take the foundation degree and then top up at a university with a full degree. What about teaching? Have you always perhaps thought you might like to become a teacher? We have an award in education and training, which is a 14 week evening class, which you could perhaps dip your toe in the water and see if it was for you. But if you really think you would like to teach 16 plus, and it is incredibly rewarding, then why not think about the full diploma? Again, in the evening, for over two years. This is a very exciting course and one that's very accessible to all. Our professional studies courses are in management and in human resources. So we offer the level five certificate and diploma in leadership and management. That's a monthly attendance, one day a month, over nine months. And then we offer a weekly attendance for the human resources courses at level three and then again at level five. So that's a certificate at level three and a diploma in management at level five. Another course that we offer is a diploma in teaching and assessing learners with dyslexia and moderate learning needs. 
This is a really, really interesting course, run in the evening, and would really appeal if you're already working in a school and wanted to specialise in something that would help learners who had these special needs. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little insight into the different courses that are available in this area of the curriculum. Um, if I could start by talking to Linda, uh, just a couple of questions around sort of the award and diploma in teaching. Uh, oh, actually, Linda has temporarily disappeared, so we'll come back to Linda. Um, Hugh, if we talk to yourself about the access to HE course, we'll, we'll start there then. <laughs> Um, so it's a one year course. Uh, does that mean it's a relatively intense course to study? Oh, you're just muted, Hugh. First fence there, I'm going to get it watch racing. Uh, right, OK, can you hear me OK now? Is that better? Yeah, um, yeah it, it is a very intense, but it's also at the same time a very reward, rewarding course. Um, we, we fill it with three different subject areas that are studied and we uh, offer two different pathways. We offer the uh, social science and humanities pathway uh, and we offer the health professional pathway, um, both of which are very intensive, but as I said earlier, um, very rewarding um, for the students who take part and for most of them, for nearly all of them in fact, to look back at where they are in, to look at where they are in June and look back at where they were in September. Um, many people have made massive leaps and essentially um, changed their lives completely in the space of a year. Uh, wow, great. Um, so what, what exactly do they do they study? What, OK, what, what's involved? What, what subjects? OK, um, the subjects for the social science and humanities pathway are uh, literature, psychology and sociology. Uh, and for the health professional pathway, uh, it's sociology, psychology and biological science. Um, and then all pathways uh, complement that with the, with the st a study skills unit, uh, which helps to prepare them for more practical elements of university life, uh, such as referencing, um, planning, studying, uh, putting together assignments, that type of thing. OK, brilliant. Um, so in terms of progression, obviously, it's primarily aimed to progress people onto university. Yes, so it is. Have have people used that to sort of springboard onto a whole range of different uh, trajectories, as it were? Lots of different. Yeah. Yes, they have courses. absolutely. I mean, it is primarily aimed at um, people who are wanting to go to study in higher education, but it's not necessarily the case. Sometimes people do use it uh, for career progression as well. Um, but for those who want to go into university, um, on the health professional side of things, students go into a whole range of courses. Um, particularly popular in midwifery um, and various nursing uh, courses, but we also have people who go on to do social work, physiotherapy. So there's a whole range uh, of health related uh, HE courses that students go on to. With the social science and humanities side of things, that's extremely broad. We've had people uh, going on to study music um, related uh, courses. We've had people going to do sociology and psychology and having enjoyed their time on the access course. Uh, and literature, of course, um, but also other um, um, related courses as well. So right across the sort of humanities and social science spectrum, criminology is quite popular. Um, we get students going away to study those courses at universities uh, across the country um, for those people who, who don't have um, particular ties to Hereford at this, at this stage in their life. OK, brilliant. Thank you. Um, I see Linda's back, so we'll uh, try you again, Linda. Um, just Hello. Um, hi there. Um, so the um, award in education and teaching uh, in the video you mentioned it's a relatively short course. There might be a few parents watching now that have maybe enjoyed um, homeschooling the last few weeks. So is it truly a course that anyone could 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 attend? Yes, it, it really is. It is an evening class, so you can come once a week over 14 weeks uh, between uh, 5.30 and 8.30 and it covers the very basics of teaching. It is really looking at teaching for 16 plus onwards, but it covers absolutely any curriculum area. So it's it's really interesting. We get uh, quite good numbers on these courses. It's very 
diverse and it does mean that if you're qualified already in uh, in an area that you might want to move into teaching or training because it could be either of those then this might be the course for you it's really very accessible okay brilliant and then obviously if if they really take a fancy to it they can then move on to the diploma and study a bit more in depth Yes, that's what we really like. And actually quite a high percentage of people do that. They do the the taster course, as we like to think of it. And then they move on to the full diploma, which is only probably for someone who is seriously thinking of making teaching a second career for them. And um, that requires a degree of teaching, um, practical teaching placement over the two years. But we can assist in giving you ideas of where to find that. And that is part and parcel of the course, as well as studying in the evening. So it is it is really enjoyable and can, of course, lead to a totally new career for you. Brilliant. Thank you. Linda. Um, someone's just asked about the uh, professional studies courses, uh, sort of management and human resources. Could you give a little more information on those sort of the different options available? Yes, yeah, so there are a few options. You've got the management course at level five and this is general management. So this could be from any area of business where they want a management qualification at level five. Level five is an operational level. So it's somebody who's higher than a supervisor, but perhaps has not yet achieved that strategic point. Um, it's similar for the CIPD courses that is particularly aimed at HR professionals and the level five is HR management and the level three is HR practice. So either of those would be really attractive to somebody who is looking for a career in human resources or who already has a career but wants to gain qualification and expand their CV. Okay, excellent. Um, um, while I've got you as well, I'll just um, ask about the um, diploma in teaching learners with dyslexia and specific learning difficulties. Um, again, that course is that for someone who maybe is already working in that kind of an environment and wishes to expand their knowledge and get a qualification under their belt, or could it potentially be for anyone? It is really quite specialised. So the person that would come on this course probably already works in a school and they may be a, te a teaching professional already, but it would be someone who has a particular interest in helping learners with dyslexia or moderate learning needs. And this, this course is highly specialised, really interesting, and gives you a really good qualification which enables you to work in a more specialised way in educational establishments. OK, brilliant. Um, and then one last question for you, Linda. Um, we've had someone on the live questions just ask um, how large are average class sizes? I suppose that's quite broad given the variety of different classes, but. I, I'm so sorry, Dave. Could you repeat that? The sound went just at the vital moment. <laughs> yeah, never. Um, so someone's asked what are the average class sizes? Um, I, I suppose that's, they've not specified which particular one, um, but I suppose in general, uh, the class sizes for all of these courses, are they large, small, somewhere in the middle? They, they tend to be small to medium sized. Um, we don't tend to have hugely large classes, except in access to HE where we have bigger numbers applying. But in the remainder of the courses in this area, I would say an average class size is probably um, around about 12. Uh, it can go higher and be smaller years, but we accommodate everyone. Obviously, going forward, we will put different measures in place, um, but we, we welcome everybody. Yeah, perfect. OK, thank you. Um, I'll move on to the um, uh, FTA and learning support now. Uh, Anthony, if I bring you in first just to discuss this a little bit. Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> so uh, the, the learning support degree is that again is that sort of focused on people who are already in that environment or maybe someone looking for a career change? It it, it can be either and it's it's um in the past we've had people follow on to the foundation degree course from the 
um, the teaching assistant courses at level two and level three. Uh, the entry requirements of a foundation degree are um, a level three qualification of some description, such as A-levels or an MVQ level three or a BTEC or something like that. Um, but there is another route in which um, is for people who've had su uh, sufficient experience in the area of, of being a teaching assistant or within that, that environment um, where there's, an, there's actually another route to access the course. So we have a combination of, of uh, different routes um, that people take to, to, to join us on the course um, and following the course uh, with their foundation degree uh, quite a few people have actually gone on to jobs where they are a high level teaching assistant um, or they're actually uh, employed in some sort of um, middle management capacity uh, as a teaching assistant and then some people have actually gone on to uh, for example the University of Worcester but other universities as well to actually top up their foundation degree to a full degree. Uh, okay and, and what would that full degree be in just in learning support or? Yeah well it, it can be that they can actually specialise in a in a final year a top up year um, so that they can actually do a, a range of, of different subjects all, all broadly related to to that to this sort of area to education. OK, brilliant. Um, I'll just bring in Zoe just to talk about uh, sort of the the work placement side of things, if that's OK. Hi. Um, so on, on the learning support, um, obviously there's an element of needing to be in a workplace and and doing what you're learning, as it were. Could you sort of expand on that a little bit for us? Yes, yeah, so the foundation degree for learning support, what we need really is um, people to have at least 10 hours a week within a setting and that we can keep track of where they are as well as then working with us in the college to make sure that they're getting up to date uh, and relevant information from schools as they go. Yeah and presumably that that can either be paid or, or volunteer work depending on circumstances? Yes it can be paid or on a voluntary basis. We have got students who are full-time um, and their schools kindly allow them to come for the half day and the evening session with us. Others are volunteering for the two or three days in different settings. OK, so in terms of the course, then it's it's a relatively short amount of actual study time in, in the working week, as it were. It's not like you've got to take out several days for no, it. We, um, we're classed as a full time course um, and we work from a half one to half eight on, on a particular day and uh, you have then 10 hours at least within a setting where you're actually working through and we do expect um, at least 10 hours of independent study time as well so although you may only be in college for an afternoon and an evening per week the expectation is on that independent study from the student yeah so you make up the time elsewhere sort of thing absolutely yeah oh, that's absolutely fine thank you um just looking to see if we've got any further questions come in? Uh, we've had someone ask, are some courses full time? Um, I mean, as you sort of mentioned there, the a lot of them are full time degrees, but consist of small amounts of time in class and then small amounts of, of working independently. Um, yes, do, do you want, want me to pick up on that, Dave? Uh, if you could please, Linda, yeah. Yes, I mean, the the, the full-time courses within the um, selection that you've got today are obviously the access to higher education. That is what we consider to be a full-time programme. But um, even though it's full-time, the learners are only in three times a week, three days a week. And that's when the courses are running as they were before COVID-19. Obviously, things may have to change in the the other course that is actually considered to be full time is the foundation degree in learning support and those learners come in for an afternoon and an evening per week. Now obviously there's work to be done outside of these hours but those are the purely full time programmes and then all the other courses are considered part time so you would only be coming in for part of a day or an evening and studying over a one year or a two year course. Brilliant. Thanks, Linda. That, that sums it up nicely. OK, um, so unless there's anything else to add, uh, it doesn't look like we've had any further questions come in. Uh, I 
I think we can wrap the session up there. Um, unless there's anything else you wanted to add at all, Linda, just in general for any of these courses? Uh, I don't think so. I think, you know, we've got pretty good information from everybody. And obviously, if there were any queries, we would happy be happy to answer emails or anything that you can forward to us, Dave. That would be fine. Yeah. OK, not a problem at all. So if anyone watching either live now or uh, the, the recording once it's up, um, feel free to send us any further questions either using the contact form on the website, uh, message us on social media, or if you've got any um, tutors emails, uh, by all means utilise those as well. Um, and we'll get any questions you have answered and uh, we'll hopefully see you in September this year or next. Thank you very much.